everyone. I am so excited because today we get to do one of my favorite Tide Pull art projects, project as something to signify a little bit of what we've been learning with Tide Pull creatures. And so we call this a window into a Tide Pull art project. And this is what it looks like. Yours probably will look different, right? But it is some sand, real sand ar uh, around the outside. And then it's like a window into a tide pool. And notice the different tide pool creatures you might see. The living and non-living items that are in there. There's some rock and different creatures and some kelp and seaweed. So today for this art project, you are going to need to go to your materials bag. You will find a white piece of paper with a bag of sand attached, and it might have a strip of paper that says um, into, window into a tide pool. And so you're gonna wanna get this. And then also, in addition, you're gonna need watercolors today and um, colored pencils. You can use colored pencils or crayons, but no, no pen. Colored pencils or, or crayon. You're gonna need a permanent marker, a pencil, and some glue. So those are the items you will need. Go get those, pause the video, and then we will start the art lesson. Okay, see you soon. Okay, there are a few ways you can do this. You can either look at my, um, my picture and pause it, and draw similar, similar, similarly to what I've done, if you're a visual person and you would like that, or you can watch step-by-step step what to do. If you do decide to pause this, make sure that when you're drawing, that you use pencil first, then we're gonna trace with permanent marker, and then last, um, then colored crayon or colored pencil, then we will do the watercolor, and then the last step is doing the sand. So um, here we go. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is draw kind of like an oval. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Um, a, and I call this like the window into the tide pool. Okay, and then the next step you'll wanna do is uh, start building your tide pool. So whatever you learned about, you could start making. I'm gonna make some rocks in my tide pool. There's my rocks, some kelp, seaweed. There's some more kelp. I think I'm gonna do all my plants first. And you might draw kelp or seaweed differently. And then some sculpins swimming by. Happy little sculpins, hello. And sea stars, love those sea stars. So pretty, so many different colors. And if you make a mistake, don't worry, you can turn it into something, right? Or you have an eraser, that's why we wanna use pencil first. Um, some, let's see, some limpets. Oh, some limpets on there. There's like those volcano looking shells. A little family of limpets live there. And hermit crabs. Everybody makes their hermit crabs differently. You guys have had a lot of practice. It's because I'm definitely still learning to make my hermit crabs. <laughs> There's a cute little guy. See, we'll have another guy over here. And what else is in a tide pool? We have sea urchins. And maybe a sea urchin over here. Oh, and sea anemones. Those are always fun to draw. And so the more you put into your tide pool, the more exciting it comes to life. So take your time, add as much as you can, and then when you're ready, 
um, I would pause the video and then the next step we're going to do, so if you need more time, pause the video. Um, and then the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna take permanent marker and we're gonna trace all of our lines. So I'm gonna do that quickly. I'm gonna pause the video and when I come back, all of my lines are gonna be traced in permanent marker. So for example, oh, here's my permanent marker. I'm just gonna go over all of my, my lines like this. And if I don't do it perfectly, I always could take a little eraser and erase my marks. Because sometimes when I trace, oh, I miss the line. That's okay, right? I just come and I can erase that line. And now I have a new line. I just have larger seaweed, which is totally fine. So you'll trace all your lines. And yeah. So after I trace my lines in permanent marker, I've noticed that I can still see some pencil marks. So I'm just gonna go here and quickly, not quickly, you have you have time, um, erase all of my marks. Now, if we were in the classroom, this project would probably be broken up um, into, into some phases because it is a lot of different parts to do. So when you erase too, it's also important to hold your hand on the paper and then erase because if you don't, it's, it's just a disaster and you could rip your, you could rip your beautiful work. Now, if you rip it, that's okay. It's not the end of the world, right? You can tape it, but erasing is a skill. We're not born knowing how to erase. In fact, sometimes I go too fast and I've ripped my paper many times. Okay, so then the next step you're gonna do after you're done erasing, is you're going to get your pencils or crayons. And I think actually, I, I, I thought I was gonna do color pencil, but I think I might do crayon. I like how crayon looks with watercolors. So you're not gonna color in the whole thing. You're just gonna make um, some different textures. So instead of coloring this all in green, I'm just gonna kind of shade it a little because I want the seaweed to pick up my crayon and the watercolors that I hope to to put on here. So I might pick a couple different greens. And maybe let's see what else. Um, color in our sea stars, some fun, vibrant, bright colors. So see, it's not perfectly colored in. And I wanna show you on here, because this is the finished product. If you look on here, See, I didn't color it in perfectly and the water is kind of washing over it. So color it in, I guess, as much as you can now that I look at it because the water will go over it. Um, but not too much, I guess. Okay, so let's see what other colors we want to do. Sea urchins, I always think of as like purple. And so go ahead and continue coloring it in in crayon and some, maybe some red violet, kind of magenta color. And then my rocks. And you are doing a great job coloring. I'll let you concentrate with your picture while I color mine. There's just so many fun colors. It's Hard picking what you want to do. <laughs> I think it's blue. My sculpin. And if you feel like when you're done and you want to add more, let's say you want to put more tide pool creatures in there, maybe you learned about different tide pool creatures that you want to add to it that maybe Miss Koza has never even heard of. I'd love to see if you guys add anything. Okay, and then when you're done with that step, 
that is when you're going to get your watercolors. So if you're not done coloring, please pause the video. If you're ready to move on, um, follow me. So you're gonna need your paints and some water and a paintbrush. And so you dip it in the water and then you're gonna pick your blue water and you're just gonna kind of go over and you can, I need more water in mine. And the water can go right over the rocks. Like that. And maybe you want to add like a little bit of, um, a, maybe a little green to your water. Maybe so it's not so blue or whatever you like. This is your window into your tide pool. And then we want to think about once you've filled in your blue water, I might add a little green, see what happens there, do a little experiment. Ooh, pretty. Kind of gives it a little bit of a highlight. Then when you've done your watercolor, you're going to want to take brown for sand. And you're going to color all of the edge. Oh, that's an interesting color brown. Okay. Okay, and then once you've done all the painting, you're gonna wanna let this dry either in the sun or in the kitchen or wherever your drying area is for at least, um, depending on how wet it is, you want it to be dry really before. And then when it's dried enough, you're gonna come back and we'll do the glue and the sand. Okay, I'll see you guys soon. You're doing a super job. So the last part of this can be a little messy. So you could either do it outside or you can get some sort of tray or box and do it inside of there so that you don't get sand all over your home. Um, and then you're gonna take your glue and, um, it's not working, but if you take your glue and you can make some like dots all around. Oh, this cause is using way too much. <laughs> and then you can either use your paintbrush to spread it around or, and if you do use your paintbrush, make sure you um, wash it right away or your paintbrush will get ruined. Or you can do it this way where you use your finger and you just spread it all around. All around the sand part, the brown part, not into your tide pool, except mine's definitely gonna go into the water really quick, but that's okay, because there's water inside the tide pool too, technically. And then after, you could wash your hands, because it feels kind of funny having all this glue everywhere. It is fun to get messy. I definitely miss getting messy with you guys in the class. Glitter all over the place and sand all over the floor. I don't think the janitors miss it, but I miss it. <laughs> okay, then after you're gonna wanna wash your hands. And I'm just gonna wipe my hands off really quick. And then you're gonna take your sand, which should be in a bag. Brand new sand, and you're just gonna wanna sprinkle, sprinkle it all around. And you should have leftover sand, I think, hopefully. Can always add that to somewhere in the outside area. So, put all the sand possible. And then, lastly, I'm gonna pick it up and kind of shake it off. And there is my window into my tide pool. And you'll notice there are some edges that I missed the glue and that's okay. I can always go back, put more glue and put it, um, put more sand. But yay, you guys did it. We cannot wait to see the beautiful tide pools that you created. So make sure to upload it to Seesaw so your teacher can see and tell you how proud they are of you because we are all super proud of you. That's my thumb. Give me a thumbs up. Yay. <laughs>
All right, guys, have a great day. I hope you had fun today. Bye-bye.